Greetings everybody and today we're going to be taking a look at Chebyshev's inequality and nice little results from probability theory. So yeah, this is my first probability video in a very, very long time. Um, I am taking a probability subject at uni at the moment, so I might make a couple more of these in the upcoming weeks. So let me know if you guys are interested in that and I'll definitely take a look at uh, making some more of these. So yeah, today we're just going to be taking a look at what on earth this inequality is, um, a small proof of it, as well as a neat little simple example, just to get a feel of what this inequality is all about. So let's just jump straight into the statements here. We're going to let x be any random variable. And this is the nice thing about Chebyshev's inequality. It works for any random variable you want. Um, so this random variable will have a mean of a mu and a variance of sigma squared. Um, then we're going to pick some parameter lambda here that's greater than zero. And essentially what we can do is we can bound the tail end of any distribution. So in particular, we can take a look at the probability that we are at least lambda units away from the mean. Now we can write that as x minus mu, so the distance from the mean, is greater than or equal to some positive number lambda. So this is the probability of getting in the tail end, and we can bound this above by sigma squared over lambda squared. So that's quite nice. Um, so what this is saying is if you, let's just draw a picture here, let's say this is any distribution you want, so any crazy thing, let's say we have the mean mu over here, then if we move, let's say, out to the left and to the right by lambda units, then the probability of finding yourself in the tail end over here is less than or equal to sigma squared over lambda squared. And this actually makes perfect sense because lambda is on the denominator. So you expect that the further you move outwards from the mean, and um, well, since lambda is growing, this quantity, this upper bound is going to be decreasing. Um, so you're going to be seeing less probability the more you move out away from the mean. And you also have the sigma squared here, what's that doing on the numerator? Well, it makes sense because if your variance or your standard deviation is greater, you're going to have a larger spread of probability, which means that even if you kind of fix your lambda here, if your spread is larger, then you're going to be increasing the probabilities of the tail end. Um, so this sigma squared over lambda squared makes perfect sense where they are. Um, so that's pretty much Chebyshev's inequality allows you to bound the tail end of any distribution. Let's take a look at a quick proof of this. The proof is rather simple, um, but it's quite nice nonetheless. So the idea is we're going to be constructing some new random variable, let's call it y. So we're going to define a new random variable y. Um, and why is this going to be some kind of indicator function? And what are we going to be indicating? We're going to be well, indicating when we are at least lambda away from the mean. So we can write this as the set of where x minus mu is greater than or equal to lambda. So this weird set over here, um, this is really um, a subset of your sample space, whatever it happens to be. And really, this is just the shorthands for saying what well, the set of all um, elements in your sample space, so outcomes, such that um, if you take a look at x of omega minus mu, and this is at least lambda away from the mean. So that's really what it's shorthands for, but let's not worry about that too much. Really, if you want to spell this out explicitly, this indicator is one or zero. It's going to be one when x is, well, at least lambda away from the mean. So we can write this as x minus mu greater than or equal to lambda, and it's going to be zero otherwise. So if you want a bit of a picture as to what this is doing here, we can maybe plot out the x and y axis. So this is this picture at the bottom here. This is not any probability distribution. It's just showing the relationship between the values of y and the values of x. So if x is more than lambda from the mean, we're going to be at a value of one for y. So something like this. And if we're less than lambda from the mean, then we're going to be at zero. So this is um, not lambda, that's actually mu over there. And this point over here, this is mu plus lambda, and then we have mu minus lambda like so. 
that's roughly what um, y and x are doing. So we're going to start off with this over here, this definition. And what we're going to do is we're going to be taking a look at the expectation of y. Now here's the nice thing, the expectation of y is going to recover this exact probability on the left hand side. So this actually works out quite well because if you take a look at the definition of expectation, it's basically the values times the associated probabilities and you add all of them together. So what are the values for y? It's one and zero. So if you write out the formula, it's going to be one times the probability that this happens and then plus a zero times the probability that the complement here happens. But zero times anything is well, zero. So you're left with one times the probability of this guy over here. So that's the nice thing about the indicator function. If you take its expectation, it's just the probability of whenever this one here happens. So x minus mu um, greater than or equal to lambda, um, like so. So what we want to do now is we want to bound this probability, which means we, well, equivalently, we could find a bound for the expectation of y. And we can do this by taking a look at our random variable y and finding an upper bound for that random variable. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing. We're going to be taking a look at how we can bound our random variable y here. So we're going to do this by cases. We're going to take a look at what happens when the first case happens. So if x minus mu is greater than or equal to lambda, um, well, then what happens? What we can do is divide both sides by lambda here. So we're going to be left with a 1 on the right hand side. So maybe I'll write it um, down here. So 1, that's going to be less than or equal to, I divide by lambda, which leaves me with x minus mu. And then all this in absolute values um, divided by lambda. Now, when x minus mu is greater than or equal to lambda, that's exactly when y is equal to 1. So we have a 1 here, so that's also equal to y. So what we're saying is that y is bounded above by whatever this quantity is, um, when x minus mu is greater than or equal to lambda. Now, I want to take things one step further, actually. I'm going to swear this term, and this actually is going to give me another upper bound because this quantity at the moment, it's greater than or equal to one. So if you swear something that's greater than or equal to one, you're going to get a bigger number. So this is X minus mu, whole thing squared over lambda, but squared. So that's an upper bound for Y when, well, this condition happens. Um, let's take a look at the other case. So what happens when Y is equal to zero? Um, so let's say if X minus mu is uh, less than lambda now, what's going to happen? Well, y is going to be definitely equal to zero, okay? But because a zero is, well, zero, it's going to be less than any positive number. So I can pick any positive number I want or any positive function, and why not take this over here? Why not just take x minus mu but squared over lambda squared, because this absolute value squared, that's always positive. Lambda is positive by assumption, so this whole entire thing on the right-hand side is positive. So y equals zero is definitely less than this positive number. So if you kind of combine all those cases together, um, what you'll find, so we jump over here now, what you'll find is that y, um, what we considered both of these cases and we found these upper bounds for it, y is always less than or equal to x minus mu squared over a lambda squared, which is quite nice. So we know that the expectation of y is equal to this probability. So what we can say is that if we take the probability here, so the probability that x minus mu uh, is greater than or equal to lambda, well, we know this is the expectation of y here. But here, we found an upper bound for y. So if y is less than or equal to something, um, then the expectation of y is also going to be um, less than or equal to the expectation of this guy here. So that's less than or equal to the expectation of x minus mu, but squared over lambda squared. Um, but here, I'm actually running out of a board space, so let's get rid of all of this junk over here. Let's jump back to the left-hand side. What we can say from here, so we have 
y at the moment, this is a less than, well actually, the probability, let's write that down, the probability of x minus mu greater than or equal to lambda at the moment, and we know it's less than or equal to this guy, but now we can use properties, the linear property of the expectation to bring this lambda squared out. So this is one over lambda squared, and then we have the expected value of x minus mu and the whole thing squared. But you'll notice one thing here, x minus mu squared in the ex expectation, that's exactly the definition of variance. So this here is equal to sigma squared over lambda squared. And that basically completes the proof. So the probability of uh, finding yourself in this tail end is bounded above by this quantity. And this works for all random variables, which is quite nice. So that's pretty much the proof of Chebyshev's inequality. I think there's um, quite a few other variations of this as well, but this is the one that I found in my textbook or my um, notes, I guess, for my subject. So um, I'll just use this one here, but there's plenty more proofs or variations of this proof. Um, so that's Chebyshev's inequality. Um, just a remark though, it's also related to what's known as the Markov inequality. So the Markov inequality goes as follows. If I can spell Markov right, the Markov inequality. What does this guy tell us? It tells us if you take the probability of the absolute value of a random variable greater than or equal to some lambda parameter, just like before, then you can bound again this tail end probability from above by the expected value of x to the k in absolute values, like so, divided by lambda also raised to the k. So Markov inequality, it's kind of like a generalization in a way of the Chebyshev's inequality, um, but here you take a look at the kth moments um, where Chebyshev's inequality, you only take a look at second moments. And the proof of this is basically the exact same, but instead of um, that step where we um, bounded, I think it was x minus mu over lambda by x minus mu over lambda squared, you basically turn this into the kth power. So the proof is basically the exact same. That's Markov's inequality, which is closely related as well. So that's Chebyshev's inequality. Let's take a look at a quick example just to finish off this video. So the example we'll take a look at over here is let's suppose we have some x, which is a random variable, of course. And we're going to suppose that the mean of x is equal to 500. And we also have the standard deviation. Actually, this the variance of x is equal to 100. And the question is, well, it finds the probability that um, 400 is less than x is less than 600. So the way you do this is, well, notice, first of all, this is symmetric about the mean. The mean is 500 and we're dealing with 400 and 600. So what we can do is kind of shift things over to center ourselves around the mean. So we're going to get the probability that minus 100 is less than x minus 500. So I'm just subtracting 500 everywhere and this is less than 100. Okay, so this is nice and symmetric now. So what we can do is we can rewrite this as the probability that the distance x minus 500, so x from the mean, is actually going to be at most 100. Now this seems a bit funny here because, well, this is less than, so we're not really taking a look at the tail and the probabilities, but we can turn it into the form that we want for Chebyshev's inequality by just taking the complement. So this is equal to one minus the probability that we have x minus 500 absolute value is greater than or equal to 100. And here, since we're taking a look at the tail end probabilities, we can just apply Chebyshev's inequality. We just have to be careful though that this is not a less than or equal to because we're taking a minus here. So because we're bounding this probability from above and it's negative, we're over here, we're actually finding a lower bound. So this is greater than or equal to. We have one minus. So here, 500, that's um, mu, 100, that's exactly lambda. So it's going to be um, greater than or equal to one minus sigma squared, but that's 100, divided by 
um, lambda squared, but that's 100 squared. So this is equal to 1 to minus 1 over 100 or 0 0.99. So what is this saying here? Let's do a picture over here. So in this case, the mean is 500. So let's put that here. We have any random distribution we want. Um, let's say this is 400 and this is 600 over here. Then what this is saying that the probability of finding yourself between 400 and 600 uh, it has to be greater than a 0 0.99. So between 400 and 600 um, is basically the whole distribution or almost the whole distribution. So it's impossible for this probability to be 0 0.98 or something. It has to be greater than or equal to 0 0.99. So that's um, a nice little example of Chebyshev's inequality. You can get these um, nice results here. You can bound any random variable, any distribution you want. So that's all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As I said before, I might make more of these in the future. Um, so yeah, hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see everyone later. Bye bye.